another rainy day in Central Texas and today I'm making a treat. This is something that I learned how to make years ago when we lived in Corpus Christi, Texas. Since moving back to Waco almost 10 years ago, I've not made it since. Part of the reason is it's a little bit labor intensive, um, especially if you don't have a food processor. Thanks for joining me today on Susan's Cozy Kitchen. I'm making lumpia. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to do, put the food processor to work. I have a little wedge of cabbage. I'm gonna cut a little bit smaller. Sorry, my cutting board's over here where you can't see. I'm just gonna cut that a little smaller and drop into the bowl of my food processor. I have some pieces of carrot. Drop those down in there. And I have some green onion that I'm going to add to the mixture. Once it's all cut, it'll be roughly a half cup of each. Here we go. You want it to come out the consistency of slaw. So half of an onion, just quartering it, and I'm gonna toss that in here. Now I'm going to pour this up. Not as small as I did the cabbage and carrots and green onion, but I do want this small. Okay, put this back into the bowl with the garlic. All right, next step, I'm heating a frying pan to medium high and I added about a tablespoon of vegetable oil. And once this heats up, I'll be adding a pound of ground pork. Okay, this is hot, so in goes the pork. I love that sizzle. You break up the ground pork and brown it. Cook it until it's done. If you wanted to do vegetarian lumpia, you could very easily do that. Increase the amount of vegetables you put in it and maybe add some mushroom to it, something else like that, maybe more cabbage, and uh, do that instead of adding the ground pork. You wanna chop it up as small as you can as you're making it because you don't want big pieces of meat in your Olympia, you want it to be kind of small all the way through. Okay, that's looking good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and call this done. And I want to leave just that little skim of uh, grease on there because I need that for my onion and garlic that I'm about to cook. So I can go the onion and garlic. Just want to saute these for a bit. Now I'm going to add the cabbage, carrots, and green onions. I'm just gonna stir these in and let these cook together for a little bit. Okay, time to add the pork back in. And if you've been wondering, where's the seasoning? You're just throwing all this stuff in there with no seasoning. I'm about to add that too. I have a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of salt, and just under a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm just gonna sprinkle that all over. And now to that, I'm also going to add a teaspoon of soy sauce. So I like to use the Bragg's liquid aminos. You can use it one-to-one -one ratio in place of soy sauce. I'm just gonna sprinkle that over it. And now stir that in. That's our flavoring. I'm going to mix this together really well. Let it continue cooking just a little bit more. I want those flavors to really blend and meld together. And I'm going to turn this off now. I'm going to let it sit for a while and cool down before I start rolling the lumpia because it's just, right now it's too hot to handle. Okay, I'm back, ready to put the lumpia together. Ooh, 
think the hardest part might be getting these egg roll wrappers to separate. All right. And you don't want to put a lot in here. You want it to be nice and thin. And let's see. I think the recipe says to do three tablespoons of filling. So this is somewhere between two and three. Now, clean hands, and you want to roll that around. Tuck it in, tighten it as much as you can. And then fold in the sides so that it doesn't seep out either end when it cooks. So that's folded in. And now you roll it. And try to keep it as tight as you can. Sorry, I'm sticking my hand there in the way. You're just rolling and tightening as you go. Just trying to keep it as tight and as thin as you can. And then when you get to the end, just a little bit of water to moisten it and then roll it on. Then put it seam side down onto a wax paper lined cookie sheet and cover it with some plastic wrap just to keep the lumpia from drying out as I'm making them. Here's a tip for keeping your wrappers from drying out while you're working over here. Wet some paper towels and put over the wrappers to help keep them moist. And if you have a thing about using your hands when you're cooking, this is not something you want to make because your hands are in this like crazy. Another tip for you, these freeze really well. Once you get them rolled up, you can pop them into the freezer to cook later. There, Charlie's putting his two cents worth in. Sir barks a lot. He's part schnauzer, part poodle, all mouth. And already I'm getting tired and I'm starting to put more and more filling in here. Such a uh, temptation when you're making this is to start making them fatter. You really don't want to do that. You want them to stay nice and thin. This said it had 50 of these in here. Um, I've only made 11 and I'm more than halfway through, so obviously I'm making these uh, with two and three wrappers together. <laughs> Oops. Serving size one wrapper, servings about 50. I did something wrong because I'm not even going to have 25. Either I'm not very good at this or the bag lied. I have a feeling it's probably me. Y'all know I'm not going to let that upset me, right? There's too much else in life worth getting upset about get upset about something like the thickness of my egg roll wrappers. Going to preheat my air fryer 400 for seven minutes. Before I put them in, it's going to give them a little spritz over the sink. Okay, and you saw that was just a very quick little light spray across the top. There we are. Okay. Well, let's let those go for seven minutes. Okay, we're down to the last minute. Let's take a look. Oh yes, those are finished. So let me add them. I'm trying to do this as a lefty. It's not easy for me. I want to try one. Okay, this is one from earlier. Still very hot. Just going to, hey, see how it cracks open. Mm. They taste just like the ones from my friend's mom. They taste a lot like the ones from the restaurant we used to go to. And bonus, they weren't deep fried or pan fried in oil. So they don't have all of the oil and all of those calories. So I'm calling that a win-win. As always, the 
full recipe is in the description box below along with a few other things that you might want to take a look at. Check it out. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. While you're there, hit that subscribe button and if you haven't already, ring the notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a video to YouTube. Thanks for watching. God bless.